Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I'm going to show you the latest information on what's going on with Storm Debbie, because I am showing still it is going to intensify right before landfall. Matter of fact, on the latest information, we are showing that it is going to go anywhere from a Cat 1, go all the way up to 86 miles per hour sustained winds, 104 miles per hour wind gusts. Then they have it after landfall going down to a Cat 1 of 75. But until then, they don't have anything marked right here. Now, I've been seeing and hearing in the comments that there's some people out there that are saying this is only going to be a high-end tropical storm. Please help me share this information to other people. Let them know the real information of what's going on with this tropical storm hurricane that's going to happen. Because it's going to get really bad. Matter of fact, the stall is showing not only true, it's showing that it's coming earlier and the rainfall amounts is getting even worse. Now, this is only known by people that's raised and lived in the Gulf of Mexico. Whenever they say, hey, you got a tropical storm coming, we already know, honey, we're getting a hurricane. We already know this. This is the way it is in the Gulf of Mexico. And not only that, right here, when it gets close to landfall, all this shelving gets really shallow, right close to land. And one thing that always happens with these storms as they get close to landfall is they slow down, and they start intensifying. So if it has it way out here, way out here at 86 miles per hour sustained winds, and all this time to intensify, it is going to be stronger than a Cat 1. Now, I still don't think it would be all the way up to a major hurricane, mostly because of the trough is swinging this towards the east, and the high pressure is growing pretty quickly, so it is getting that turn in there. But you do see how it is getting that northern push like I showed you in the last video, more of that northern push rather than curving very quickly. This will give it more time also to intensify. Now I'm going to show you the latest information in this video. If you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year along with my weather forecasting. And all my subscribers knew about this system over a month ago. And about three weeks ago, we've been trying to follow the trends of what's going on with this storm system. Make sure you stay ahead of the weather. That way you know exactly what is going on. Now look at the newest information for this morning. Look at this wide area of this stall and we always knew here on this channel if it didn't make it out by monday it was going to stall and that's not good this is where the rainfall is just going to add up but everything has ramped up the rainfall amounts the tornado threat the storm surge everything is ramping up and it's going to ramp up more the more this storm strengthens the more these numbers are going to grow so for today not only the two percent you also got the five percent chance for tornadoes so all the green is all two percent all the way up into georgia and you get the five percent chance for tornadoes this is only for today this is going to grow for tomorrow as well but it's going to consolidate to the northern side where southern florida will be out of the mix so you do got to watch out for the tornado threats also now so far on the winds i will do my afternoon updates so make sure you click that bell select all so you do get the updates now this is going anywhere from 39 miles per hour sustained winds all the way up to possibly 73 and what they're showing now is it'll be somewhere around 69 miles per hour sustained winds strongest around the core and maybe up to 86 miles per hour wind gusts strongest once again around the core but you could reach 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts right along the coast and that's everyone that's in this blue section also up here as it goes a little further past tampa you can see it's taking that wide turn but it is going to get pushed by the high pressure now once it gets closer towards the coast this is where it strengthens up they have it as a cat one hurricane after landfall before landfall i do believe we will see a two right here but you see so far it's 75 miles per hour sustained winds 92 miles per hour wind gusts now the wind gusts is everyone that's in all this pink section the hurricane for sustained winds is going to be over here by perry in this pink section right here now this is subject to change also subject to grow then after it comes on land, then you're still dealing with a wide area of tropical storm force winds. And this is anywhere from 39 to 73. And you see they have it somewhere around 74. So the outer bands would be somewhere around 50 or 60 plus. And you can see it grows into southern Georgia. It goes right up into Georgia and South Carolina. You see how it's more onshore. 
what kind of goes all the way into the Carolinas and starts curving even more. This is going to change. I don't believe this track of this dip and then dip to the north. This part always changes. What I'm seeing is this is trying to come across to this edge of the Atlantic. And if it revolves around long enough, it will pull strength from this Atlantic and keep this storm intensified. Now, another thing you got to remember is when this storm starts going right up the coast, you got to counterclockwise motion on the system. So the storm surge is going to be worse as it gets closer. And then when it goes on shore, all the storm surge, just like you had with barrel right around that center, just to the east of it is going to be the worst part. Then once it gets offshore and it starts coming into the Atlantic, you got to worry about storm surge twisting around into this direction from that system and showing this stall is going to last longer than expected. Rainfall amounts. Rainfall amounts has dramatically gone up because of this stall effect. So we'll show you the latest levels, but you see it's getting worse for northern Florida, southern Georgia, and going deeper into South Carolina. I've seen some people say, hey, you know, 15 inches might be okay with South Carolina. I think we'll be okay with 15 inches. That's just 15 inches for the next few days. When you look at the stall and how long this is going to last, you could have potentially a couple of feet of rainfall adding up. And this is going to turn potentially catastrophic. No joke. Plus another thing, the tornado threat. Look for today. As you go through today, you can see how the banding really comes across as you go into this afternoon. So anywhere from Cape Coral up towards Tampa, you don't get the banding coming on shore. And this is bringing that 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gusts. Now remember, these are going to be usually quick spin ups with these Tropical systems, this is where you get these tropical tornadoes and you get quick spin-ups from the banding. But once again, look at 4 p.m. Look how much is spreading all the way out, all the way towards Gainesville. So just because you're not close to the center, everybody knows, the banding is the worst part, chance to get those tornadoes. And as you go all the way to 8 o'clock for tonight, the banding is going to reach all the way up into Georgia. And you can see right when the center starts coming in, as we go towards 5 o'clock for tomorrow morning, it's still going to bring all this pulling from the east side. This is where your storm surge is going to get worse. Now the storm surge has gone up. And remember, the rainfall amounts does not include in the storm surge. And you can see the latest information here from National Hurricane Center, still showing that hurricane all the way from two o'clock tomorrow morning, all the way to 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. That is a 12 hours of intensifying. Matter of fact, the latest advisory has just come out again and it's upgraded again to 60 miles per hour. Instead of 50, now it's 60. This is intensifying and it didn't even go across the warmest part yet it's about to this is going to show a two right here this afternoon and maybe even a hurricane over here right off the coast of georgia i do believe but you can also see that next tropical wave like i showed you in the last video is going to be coming into this direction and it could either turn or go straight to the west then after this which is a slight chance it could come into the Gulf. After this, we're going to be dealing with a wave coming off the MDR going to Atlantic into this direction. Could be towards the coast, could be a fish storm. I will keep you updated. But so far, they have it at 20% in the next seven days, 10% in the next 48 hours. Now, just to refresh your memory, anyone along the Gulf Coast, you don't need to let them know this. They already know this. As soon as this goes across, remember, this storm is going to be right here into a hurricane, into this very warm water, the warmest waters in the Gulf of Mexico, high 80s and some spikes of 90. Then it's going to travel from here all the way to this location, a long period through the warmest water, also tap into some of the deep ocean heat content. This storm is going to intensify and right before landfall is going to meet that shelving and is going to slow down and start wrapping up some more. And you can see here from the latest from the deep ocean heat content that as it passes right north, it is gonna tap into that deep ocean heat content somewhat on the left side of this system. And that is gonna help keep it strong. As it starts upwelling the, the temperatures from down beneath when it starts strengthening up, it's gonna pull up warm waters, not cooler waters. And the little bit of shear that's on this system is very small amount. So as it strengthens up, it's going to fight anything that tries to come in from the shear, from the dry air. You can see this when you look at that track guidance. So literally in 48 hours, having it all grouped up right here on the north. But look at it in 72 hours. 
And then when you look a little further, you'll see 144 in there. That's six days. That's because it's going to come this way, then it's going to come back, then maybe go back this way. Just a crazy stall. So for today, you can see how it did ramp up your chance for tornadoes. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the tornado threat for today. Now, when you look at the latest with NATO cast, it shows it could ramp up a little bit more on your chance for tornadoes. Plus tomorrow, you see it also ramped up. You got that big 5%. I'm showing that could grow as well. But once again, here's your cities and states at risk for the tornado threat for tomorrow, for Monday. Now, when you take a look at Colorado State University, you can see for tomorrow, it actually shows that it could ramp up some more for northeastern Florida and Georgia, chances for tornadoes to increase. But so far, everyone in all this dark green got anywhere from two to four inches, which is enough, but it's the smallest amount. All this bright yellow, this is going anywhere from four to six inches all the way to North Carolina. The darker co color is going anywhere from six to eight inches, but once you get into this darker orange, this is where you're going anywhere from eight inches to a foot. Now look how much bigger it's getting. All this red, all this red is 12 inches to 16 inches. And from Georgia to South Carolina, 16 to 20 inches in that darker red. And that pink is anywhere from 20 inches to 30 inches of rainfall. Only for the next five days. This storm is going to stay there for a couple more days at least and continually bring in rainfall, especially over Georgia and South Carolina. And not only the slight risk for flash flooding, now we got a huge moderate level risk for flash flooding for Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. And now we have a high level of flooding. So if you're anywhere along the coast of South Carolina through the coast of Georgia by Savannah, you need to watch out because this is going to get really bad for all of you. Storm surge has gotten worse. And of course, because of the impacts from this being potentially the landfall, this is where the most is going to surge. Not only the rainfall amounts, you got the storm surge. So you got the one to three feet still going on. You still got the one to two feet. Y'all going to be done with after today. You got two to four feet going all the way past Tampa Bay. Then it climbs from three to five feet, four to seven feet. Then it goes 6 to 10 feet. This dramatically increases. Then you see it also has 4 to 6 and 3 to 5 over here. And already picking up 2 to 4 feet storm surge right here for the coast of Georgia. This is going to grow all the way into the coast of South Carolina and be bigger. You also have the storm surge inundation. So remember, these links are in the description below. That way you can follow it for yourself. And you can see the levels greater than 6 feet above ground in orange, greater than 9 feet in the red and so far we are showing that we have some areas that does have greater than nine feet of storm surge inundation as this system comes by and brings all the heavy rainfall so remember wherever you're at you come here and just zoom in and it'll show you what your potential inundation can be of all this surge so just the heavy rain flooding all this inundation right here this is going to bring your rivers and streams just flowing over into the streets Latest information on hurricane analysis forecast system showing it could go all the way down to a 973 right before landfall and then start weakening down a little bit over there. But look how it stays and just stalls for days. Also showing that as this heads to the north, look at the dry air. It's combating the dry air, trying to come in from the west. So it's not getting the shear. It's not getting strong shear at all. It's very small amounts, and it's not getting that dry air in there. And it just intensifies right before landfall and keeps heading to the north. Then after that, then maybe some dry air can try and get in a little bit and weaken it down as it does the stall. You see that? But then it comes back towards the southeast and it tries to strengthen up again. Now watch what happens at the end. You see how it tries to strengthen up a little bit more. But at the end, it goes back to the west. Remember, we had that trend of the double tap. This shows that after it stalls for a while, it could go back to the west and start getting a low pressure system way over here. So it really don't know where it's going to form. But look at that. Look at the last runs. Tries to come back and get a surface low over here in the northern gulf once again. And it's almost like a trend. You can see this with the h wharf. It's showing that northward path. It's showing intensification right before landfall. Then it gets that little stall effect. But look how it goes back to the west. 
That's the two hurricane models, and they are trending together on that, and so is the GFS. Now, to be accurate, you can see the other models. You can see with the Euro taking it over. Not really much of a stall, but still shows it as it slowly neanders up the coast and stays strong enough the whole time and going by the northeast. But when you look at the GFS, it is trending like the hurricane models. Intensifies right before landfall, still trending to the north. But look how it goes over by the Carolina and strengthens up as it gets back over warm waters. Becomes another big flooding event because all this, remember, is rotating counterclockwise. So it's going to be pulling everything into that direction. Also pulling it around towards Georgia right after that. But look at this. After that, remember the trend a while back. If you've never been here before, our trend always showed that this high pressure not only was going to expand out and block this system, that's why you've seen a stall. It's showing after it goes by Monday, now we're all the way to Thursday. It showed that this was going to expand out and stop it from going back out. That's why you see all this coming back to the west again. Eventually going back again, potentially. Might even double tap the Carolinas with another couple days of a strong storm to just come right back. Again, bringing more winds, more rainfall, more threats. But that western push is trendy. Now you can also see the latest update after we're dealing with Debbie. That next tropical wave still has a chance to kick up over here from Central America. And it can either kick up into the Gulf or... Or it could keep going to the west and going towards Mexico. Then you can see in this run, it does have its chances, but it really uh, hangs on to that westward push more than that northwestward push. But you see how it does have that chance. This does have a chance to go towards southern Texas on that next wave. And then we have after that, that next wave coming around that I told you could either come towards where Debbie went or it could go out to the ocean and be a potential fish storm. Thank you for your time, everybody. I will see you this afternoon for the latest update on this system. Make sure you click that bell so you do get the latest information. Thank you all that helps share this information. Hit that like button down below. Let people know what's going on with this system because there are people literally telling people this is going to be a tropical storm and it's obviously going to be a strengthening hurricane. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Now, before you go for this morning, I want to give you a little prayer for protection. Psalm 91. 1 through 11. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with, with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. Amen. I wish the best for every single one of y'all. Make sure you check on your neighbors and check on your pets and their pets. Make sure everything is according, not only for the people, but check on the pets. I appreciate everybody. And remember, all glory does go to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe every single day of your life and your neighbors and everyone that is around you and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Take it calmly. Don't be anxious. Remember, anxiety will bring mistakes. The one way you get rid of anxiety, and it's been proven scientifically, if you just change your heart and just become thankful, thankful for what you have, gratitude, the anxiety will leave. Try it. I'll see you all this afternoon.